So uh, I'm here with uh, Pierre Gustafson. I am doing something I've never done before. I've never done a collaborative video like this, really. And uh, so hopefully everybody can put up with some bugs. This is the Pierre Gustafson of the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Shucks. Um, well, you have made it world-famous. Before that, it was just infamous. And uh, so thank you for making it world famous, um, internationally known. Uh, and thank you for having me on. I have, you, I have had you be my guest star on my channel, but I think uh, this will be fun with you in the director's chair. And um, why don't you say what you asked me to do? So what we're doing is uh, we're going to talk about five different nibs that we really like or think are unique in some way. Uh, it's kind of interesting challenge for me to narrow down which five nibs I wanted to pull out of my collection. So I imagine it was the same for you. It was, it was the same. There was one pen I wanted to <coughs> particularly showcase and it took me an hour and a half to find it because it wasn't in its drawer where it normally is, where it had been. And um, so then where could it be? If it isn't at my desk, it has to be put in the one of the many <clears throat> places where it could reside. And I looked in all of the places except for one. And I'll describe that when I get to it. Okay. And um, but anyway, so shall we try to do the switch camera thing? I guess we're doing it vertically now, right? Yes. yes uh, the vertical seemed to fit more of what we were doing on the screen. Okay. okay. I think I think I had I just I just forgot that. Um, I will just, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to show the put the five pens that I've selected in more or less a row. I can remember how how I did this. This is this is five and a half. And here's the troublemaker here. <laughs> the one that I I ended up the pen that I took forever to find. It turns out that it's I have some pens that I'm repairing and they are in a repair spot and it could be anywhere. And then I, cause my repair spots are many <laughs> sometimes in drawers, <laughs> sometimes on my desk, sometimes they're in a cup in the bathroom soaking. So, but this one, uh, this pen was in a case with its pencil in the place where I have my pens and cases, which, generally are pens I never, ever, ever use because they're so nice in their little casket. So, <laughs> but it had, it has a nib that I wanted to showcase for this particular kind of nib. So I'll save that one for last, I guess. So okay. um, why don't you, as, as you saw in my preliminary video, I, I have five nibs that I use for five specific types of purposes, drawing and calligraphy and writing and stuff. So do you, um, how do you, well, how do I you look talk at them. about your nibs? How do you yeah, I thought that would be kind of interesting because we, we do uh, a lot of how we use the fountain pens as a very different focus. Yeah. You know, I, I'm more of a writer. You're more of a, an artist. Yeah. And so I, I thought that would be just interesting to talk yeah. about as we go along. Yeah. The, the writing part of it, the, the pen I use for writing. In fact, maybe I can start with that one if I may. Yeah, that would be perfect. Since I'm your guest, I get to start first. When yes. I, when I actually have to write words that I make up myself, not addressing envelopes, not writing a poem for in calligraphy for someone to give to their mother for Mother's Day. When I actually have to sit down and try to think of putting one word in front of another word um, that I make up myself, it's a lot of thinking. And I, 
every little tiny brain cell has to be focused on that. So a pen that's pretty, a pen that has a calligraphic nib, a pen that calls attention to itself is going to distract me from this task. And so I often will use a Parker 51 because it's a very plain pen. I could close my eyes and I know exactly what they look like. I don't need to even look at the pen to, to appreciate it <laughs> aesthetically. And But also its nib is Johnny OneNote. It, it will, um, you know, I'm not uh, seduced to make curly Q lines and fancy script so I can sit there and I can try to write uh, the words I want. But I love 51s that also by turning them upside down, I get a th finer line, a much finer line. And I use that side if I have to go back and then edit, cross out those horrible words that don't work and put in the ones that I think will work better. But um, I, I use my pens so infrequently for what you use your pens almost entirely for. You know, you write and I draw and calligraph stuff. But when I do write, I, I write with this pen, a pen like this. It could be a, it could be a Schaefer Triumph nib. It could be a Parker 61, not a Parker 51. It could be a Waterman Taper right with a very fine, non-flexible nib. Um, but it, but the the non-flexibility is the important part for this task. So, your turn, Mister. Okay. Well. You can see I have a different pen I'm writing notes down on the side with. Uh, okay. But uh, the pen I actually really like for writing, you know, I, I've talked about the Lamy 2000 a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, I think this one here really embodies it. It's a Caveco V14S. It was uh, made by Caveco back in the 60s. Okay. And it's one of those plain, slim black pens I like. Uh, this nib is, it's a fine nib. Uh -huh. uh, it is... No flex to it at all. It just, uh, you know, it's, it's not a good pen for fun writing. It's just a pen to write with. Okay. Uh, I, I always say it disappears in my hand, so I'm not okay. thinking no. about it. So when you're saying that you don't want them to be distracting, I think that's the same idea that I yeah. have. I just want yeah. to write. I know that you when, you, when you do your review of pens, you love talking about the the appearance of the pen, the finish, as you call it, or the um, plastics, the iridescent quality of them. And um, I know that you really like those things. And I can imagine if you're holding a pen that is iridescent and beautiful color, I would think that that could be distracting for you. Yeah, and that's why this is ab that's, absolutely perfect. That's that's perfect for when you write your your uh, would and you use a pen like that when you write your uh, I'm writing my novel or you're writing uh, your novel. I was going to say writing write, ideas write, down. Writing ideas down. What do you do? You write with the, Would you write with a different pen if you were writing a letter to your parents? Yeah, um, my parents. I'll usually. I might use something a little more fun, like the okay. Aurora 88, or, you know, so, yeah, um, I usually stick with one color with them. <laughs> parents appreciate that. They want to see the extra effort. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that one is, is, is similar to this. That's the closest, I think, to this in terms of how you're using it the same way that I use this pen. Okay, you, you pick another pen, and I'll see if I can find a cognate to, to okay. your second pen and my four remaining. Well, I thought it would be fun to just look at one of my flexiest pens. Okay, good. So uh, I've got a central pen, 100820, because those communists had all kinds of fun names for their pens. Oh, yes, of course, yes. It's a very romantic name. Those it's pounds, a Czechoslovakian <laughs> pen from the 1960s. But, okay. You oh, know, it is a very nice finish. Yeah, I can see that. 
But uh, you know what I've really fallen in love with is this nib. It almost feels like a paintbrush. Oh wow! Okay. So awesome. I'd be curious what your really flexy pen is. I know you talked about okay, using well, it for you sketching have to, you and have rendering. To, you have to make your your pen write something. Okay. Because I, I I don't believe you until I see it. And of course, I'm looking at this on my iPhone. So from the top of yeah, the so it doesn't look to the bottom, so wonderful. It's, it's maybe a half a centimeter. So it's not working very well for me. But I'll wait to see it in reality. I can see that there is clearly a difference. Yeah, and so. and the biggest thing for me is that I can't show you over video. Yeah. is just how uh, it feels. Okay. Well, that nothing that is, I have feels anything like it. Yeah. The the, the way a pen feels that could be and the amount of resistance it gives you as you're pressing down. Some some pens just splay there immediately and they're just give in completely. And you have to almost, you have to be very careful not to press down too hard because they're very weak almost in that sense. And there's some that, that want to spread and be very, fully flexible, but you have to work at them. Um, the pens that I have that are the most flexible are the pens I make, my Franken pens, where I take a Victorian dip pen nib like this. This is quite large, and I don't have a pen to, that that can even fit in. But this nib, a nib of that era, 1880 or so is what I use for my most flexible nibs. In my pen collecting life, buying vintage fountain pens, I have only come across maybe a dozen pens that have the flexibility that resembles the Victorian era pens. And I think this is one of them. It's a Schaefer, believe it or not. And it is, I don't have any ink in it. Um, this is a, so let's see, Wasky. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah. But let me just show you, just for comparison's sake, the a pen that that I have this is a dip pen nib here. And it's twice as fat as that one. And it's very flexible and very um, responsive and it snaps right back to zero. It goes to 60 and then goes breaks back down to zero immediately. And it's that snapping back quality that a lot of the modern pens or the more modern pens, pens from like this from the 1930s, uh, don't have as well. And I don't quite understand why. But so this pen here, I would use this for my calligraphic work, addressing envelopes, writing that poem on Mother's Day. And I would never use this to draw with. And I would never use this to write my novel because I would be distracted. But I use it for writing envelopes and place cards because it's so springy. And the lettering that I do with it um, is very standardized. I know the swoops of the letters. And when I, if I'm drawing, my brain is looking at how do I make that dark? And I will just, I almost scribble in some cases. And you can't scribble with this pen. You'd break it or tear the paper. So you have to be very mindful calligraphically in using this pen. And I imagine you you do too with your most flexible nibs. You, you make sure that the paper is really smooth and you- Yes. And you don't write really, really fast with it. You write, you're careful because there's a certain fragility, I think, that they have automatically. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 
very careful with this one. It's okay. Can I? Is my turn to go first? Yep. Uh, yes. Okay. So the, the next one on my list is a flexible nib that I use for sketching. And I was just outside a minute ago drawing, and I did these drawings of tulips. And uh, I was just standing up and holding, trying to hold the paper still as I was pushing it around. And it was, I was very aggressive. And where is the pen? I have it. Well, I'm going to pretend this was the pen. It's not exactly the pen, but it's close enough. Um, it's this. It's a wall ever sharp I was using. And this is a skyline. And often skyline nibs that have a flexible point to them, flexible nib on them, are very, I almost always try to sell them to uh, artists because who like to draw because their, their, their nib is so rubbery and springy, but in a slightly more robust way than the, the pen I just showed you. And they're usually, the little rounded ball of iridium on the end of them is a little bit bigger and a little bit more rounded. So for calligraphy, it might be a little sloppy, but for drawing, you can push it back and forth and you can, you can really scribble with it and you don't have to worry about it tearing the paper or, or breaking or snagging or anything. And they're really, it's really a fun way to draw really, really fast. And um, I just love these nibs. And they're often found on Skyline pens. They can be found on earlier wall pens and some Waterman pens as well. Waterman pens, I think, are a little tiny bit more fragile. And I'll show you that one next. Okay. But, but this is a good one for sketching. So the, 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 can, the thing that you might have that's closest to this might be a pen that you write really, really fast. You write your notes. You're not writing more than a word or two, you know, milk, Cheerios, toast, <laughs> or whatever, you know, for the grocery store. Or I, I don't know. What do, you, do, you, what, do you ever find yourself where you like to write or you have to write really really fast and you have a pen that you use for that well i'd probably go back to that Caveco v14s okay. or uh, okay. lamy 2000 yeah. but okay you know, i was thinking of a nib out of what i have here that would be like what you're you're talking about more okay. robust yeah so this is a more modern pen this is a platinum 3776 okay but it has a soft fine nib in it okay and uh you know you can it has a decent tip on it, not huge, because Japanese pens are really, uh, they're fine. Okay. It'll, it has that flex, but I will push this pen and be rough with it in a way that I would never, ever do with the, oh, good. you know, this yeah. Centro pen. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad that we're, that we both are treating the, the pens similarly, even though I'm drawing and scribbling rather almost and you're writing this you know but you're writing in a way that allows you to be less worried <laughs> so uh if you were writing a letter using that pen who would you who would you slander who would you <laughs> say oh i can think of a few people you can think, slander. Of, you can think of a bunch of people okay well we won't go there um <laughs> But it seems like, you know, when you have a pen like that, because you're not worried about harming the pen and it has a robustness to it, you are able to be a little bit more wild and carefree, maybe is the word. You, um, you know, it's sort of like being in a hot rod on an empty road, you know, or something. You can just, you can, you can step on the gas and go off-roading and things like that a little bit. You don't have to stay in the lines, I guess. <laughs> uh, one of the things I thought about as I was thinking about this earlier today, you do you always 
right more or less the same size? For the most part, uh, once in a while, like if I'm doing notes, sometimes I do headings or I do sketches okay. in my notes. I see. And there I'll get a little more creative. Okay. You know, um, because sometimes I, you know, when I've when I've tried to teach people penmanship, people who haven't used a, a pen or written in cursive forever, and they keep on falling back to sort of their half cursive, half printing, sloppy stuff that they want to avoid, I say, okay, just write twice as big, and that just that thinking outside the box in terms of scale is a nice way to get around that. And there are some people that I know that are writers and they write, they have a couple of different, I don't want to say handwriting styles, but they have a couple of different, sometimes they write very small and sometimes they write very big. So, but you, you always seem to be very consistent in your, in your, in what I see you do. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, a lot of, a lot of it's just writing. If I'm sketching, you know, trying to do like a sketch note kind of thing, that's where I'll, or I want to bring attention to something in my notes uh -huh. later, I'll make it big or different somehow. Okay, cool. Um, and you did say earlier, I think when the camera wasn't running, that when you are writing just for yourself and not for the camera, you were a little messier. Than you, than you yeah. were. I think yeah. you can see some of that over on this side. Well, I can. I... <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it does look a little uh, uh, scratchier, I'll say, a little less uh, tidy, I guess. Um, okay. So, a robust one. Your turn. I okay. Think. I, I know you had uh, thought a long and hard about, you, you said a stub nib. Yeah. Uh, what I have here is a cursive italic nib. It's the only nib I have that's been actually ground by somebody, you know, okay. different to be what it is. It's a platinum president that has a cursive italic nib on it. Okay. I'm trying to imagine what that would be like. <laughs> uh, it would be slightly stubby, I would think. Yeah. And but probably uh, and... sharper than a stub nib and it's tipped because a lot of stubs are not tipped. Okay. But okay. what I, I enjoy is you get the oh. broad downstrokes, but the very narrow cross strokes. Yeah. And it really makes my handwriting look better. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to talk about that kind of pen last uh, because it's what I use less frequently. But when I, when I talked to, when I spoke of a pen nib being an italic nib, my calligraphy friend, Ted Clausen got very upset with me. <laughs> And he said, "Italic is a typeface. It is not a nib. <laughs> you use a okay. stub nib to write italic and to write Gothic um, black letter, but there is no there's no such thing." He told me as an italic nib, but I, people use it all the time, and I and I think I understand what it means, and you understand what it means. So maybe maybe he's wrong, but. Um, uh, but it's a straight cut across, or is it an oblique or anything? No, it's just straight. It's not straight, oblique no. at all. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so did you, I'm sorry, did you write with that one? You did? Yeah, right yes, here. I see that. Yeah, okay. So when you're writing, you say your handwriting looks better with it. What it, about it, what about it? Well, I think the fun is, uh, even if you're uh, not good at calligraphy or you're not good at a flex nib, yeah. I just misspelled platinum, but okay. I'll go with it. Okay. It, just, it uh, just naturally has that character. Okay, yeah. I, I think that's true. In fact, I'll just talk about that stub nib since we're on the subject here. So the stub nib that I, I have in this pen is um, quite a broad stub. I don't know if you can see it. It's also flexible. Oh. So it's it's really 
really f fun. And um, it is a pen that wants to print. It does not want to do script. <laughs> and part of the reason is it's, it's like this big keel is on the bottom of your sailboat or your canoe or whatever it is. <laughs> and it only wants to go in, you know, it doesn't like to get off the straight line it's making. It's so comfortable going sideways or going straight down that it doesn't really want to make these tr curves. So when, if I do have to use a pen like this, and I'm doing, you know, envelopes with this kind of lettering, and it just makes me mental. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a different pen that has that same kind of nib, but just a little tiny bit more um, rounded at the. It's not so sharp on the side, and I can I have all sorts of fun with this pen, which is essentially the same kind of a stub, except it's a little bit rounder, and I love writing in script with this and it just it's really a fun thing even though i'm i'm not doing what i'm supposed to with that kind of a nib i'm uh, this one wants me to to do it right and this one says mm -hmm. to hell with it so they're really they're fun pens as a um diversion for me because i don't normally use do that kind of lettering and um, but when I do have to use that pen or a pen like it for a particular job, when it's over, I grab this pen or a pen like this one that that has the same sort of footprint as the one that I just used, but it allows me to to um, to calligraph or to do, do script with it. The other thing. Too, with a pen like this, sometimes I'll draw with it, and um, it's very much like the reed pens that um, artists used back in the olden days. Um, if you look at uh, Van Gogh drawings, they're done with a reed pen, and they're very different from the sketches I do with a regular pointed pen. So it's really, it's just a completely different feel that kind of a pen. Um, now the last one is what? What's that gonna be, Mr. Mr. Squirrel? Well, uh, mine is kind of a flex slash daily writer, so okay. <laughs> I'm curious to see what yours com is. Well, I was out of order. I didn't have, a, I don't have it quite in the same kind of order as you do, I was, but anyway, we'll find out. Let's do yours though first. Okay. Uh, my last one is uh, another visitor from behind the Iron Curtain. This uh, is a Rex pen, so it's made in. Back then, it would would have been called Yugoslavia, but uh, the company is still around. It's in Croatia now. Okay. But what I, it's kind of fun is even though it's this communist era pen, it has a yeah. Bach nib on it. They made a lot of pens with these German Bach nibs. Oh, okay. And it's a gold nib. But, you oh. know, the pen is so utilitarian looking. Yeah. But you can have so much fun. So it's 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 the love child of maybe that second one you showed me with the flexible Yeah, nib. that could be. And, and maybe the first one. You know, you said it's, it's sort of the daily writer, but it... Yeah, daily writer, but you but with some fun in it too. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is sort of the love child of the first two, um, because it's it seems like it's one that you feel most comfortable with. Um, you don't worry about springing the nib. It also um, makes your writing your novel a little bit more enjoyable, maybe. <laughs> Or not, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it'd be, even if I'm having trouble one day, sometimes just switching out the pen. Yeah. Just kind of, I don't know, it's Reef? like it jogs your brain and makes it Yeah, look it's sort of like press, pressing the reset button on the computer or something. It does, it does, you do have to change your, your, 
the way you hold the pen, the the for a few minutes you're a little uncomfortable maybe, but it eventually sort of pulls you back to where you need to go. And but it's you're sharper because of it, I think. Yeah, that's a um, good way of saying it. <laughs> the last pen I have here, which wasn't necessarily meant to be last or best or anything, but this was probably back in the early days of my collecting, this might have been the standard pen that I would like. I always specifically looked for Waterman pens at pen shows because I knew that when they had flexible nibs, they were really good. And this is a flexible number two Waterman pen. It has a very fancy barrel that it doesn't need to have to, to work, but it just happens to be the one that I have here. And I use this again for drawing. I could use it for writing and I could use it for perfectly good calligraphy. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a very, um, uh, it does 90% of what I want my calligraphy pen to do. The ones that I, my Franken pen pens. Um, but it also does 90% of what I like my drawing pen to do because there is some flexibility to it. And I would use this pen if I had to do a rendering of a house portrait uh, that's going to be engraved. You know, if I have to do a drawing that's, let's say, five inches tall of your house, which is would be on a scale of one to two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have the, a very cute house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It's 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 almost the size of a Monopoly house. <laughs> it's, it's it, but I often have to draw very you know much larger, grander houses that have you know three stories and turrets and columns and all sorts of brouhaha on them, and then I draw them usually at about three inches tall or four inches tall, and they will be reduced. Uh, or, or redrawn by an engraver to be something that's only an inch tall. So I have to be very careful in my rendering because I know it's going to be re-rendered. So I'll use a pen that's a little bit less flamboyant than the one that I used sketching. It'll, it's just a little reserved. It still has a flexible nib, but I'm making lines that are more standardized. I'm not take, making a line that goes from one side of the page to the other in a second. I'm making little tiny lines, cross-hatchy lines, and then I, when I want to make a thick line, the thick line is not going to be very big either. So it's, it's a pen that, because of its the delicacy of the nib, um, I really can't do the things that I was doing with the other pen. So it sort of holds me back, I guess. It's, it's, I'm in a little tiny bit of a straight jacket when I'm, <laughs> wearing, when I'm using this pen. And when I'm doing those jobs, those jobs are like, they're teeth gnashingly painful to do because, uh, you know, a house that has 60 windows in it and each window has, 20 panes of glass in it and they've got shutters and you know I, I just I'm starting to get sick just thinking about it <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, you know a pen that I do that work with it's 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 almost this almost becomes a technical pen like a wrote uh, Cohen or Rapidograph technical pen you know, which is too bad because this pen wants to write a really romantic novel <laughs> that 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 young young ladies would read on the on the train going uh, or in the carriage going to their country estate this is the the, the pen this pen wants to write that kind of stuff and <laughs> here i'm making it write other stuff um, I don't know if you remember 
Wasky, sometimes I will talk about or I will show that I will put a pen nib into the pen that I think it belongs in. And an example is this stub nib. Originally, this nib came on a longer green wool ever sharp. And I, this is one of the kinds that you can unscrew, and I unscrewed it. It's like an Estabrook nib, these personal point oh, okay. lever sharps. So I unscrewed it and I put it in this one because the stub nib I felt belongs in a stub pen. <laughs> and because I'm lucky in that I've got thousands of pens that I can do this nib swapping and make them fit right. And I also with the pens that I have on my desk that I use for my calligraphic work, I luckily have as many as I do that pens that are green, I use with green ink. So I don't have to continually wash out the old green ink out of the red pen to put red ink in it. So I, I keep them sort of, um, I, I, I have a, a quantity of these pens here because I will use this normally for just red ink. And, but the shape of the nib, the, the type of nib it has, I love to match them up with the pen that they, that I think they belong to in. And uh, from a personality point of view, I guess, you know, this pen that has that nib that should write the romantic novels this is the pen that they should be written in not a plain black one but this gold thing with all the flowers on it so do you, do you sometimes when you're when you're looking at a pen that you're using a pen that you had do you sometimes say gee i wish this pen would have a big fat broad nib in it or do you do you not go down that path <laughs> I guess I don't go down that path too often. You know, I have a few just cheaper pens that I swap nibs out pretty yeah. freely. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I usually just live with whatever nib is in the pen, except for, like I said, those cheaper pens. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something that most people don't do. In fact, I, there are many people that will yank out a, you know, if they bought this pen at a pen show, and it had a really stiff nib and they wanted, they don't like stiff nibs, they'd be happy to put a flexible nib in it and they wouldn't think there was anything wrong about that. Um, you know, when you have lots of nibs to put in a pen, it's, it's easy to do that. Um, but I don't think, uh, other than me, <laughs> I don't think there's anyone else that puts stub nibs in short pens. And um, I recently bought this pen, and I'm, I'll just, I know this was not one of the five, but it's this very late Wall Eversharp pen that's really, really thin. It's almost like the first pen you showed me that, okay. that almost can disappear on you. And it came with a nib that was really nothing a, a nothing nib. It was broad and, or broadish, and it really, it wrote like a ballpoint, like a felt tip. There was nothing <laughs> to it. And this, this nib, this pen size is particularly odd. So I didn't have the nibs to choose from, but I had this Schaefer nib, and it, this Schaefer nib fit perfectly. And it's whisper, whisper fine, and it just fits in this pen perfectly. Now, if I could, I'll just say that it was a very, it was a very confusing day at the Walt Eversharp factory where they misspelled Eversharp by <laughs> by spelling it S C H E A F F E R. S H E A F F E R rather than uh, E V E R S H A R P. Um, but because this is perfect, this type of nib 
in my mind, belongs exactly in this particular pen. And it's perfect. Shall we, sh shall we switch over to our faces again? Yeah, I think so. I had fun with this. Did you have fun with this? I did. And um, oh. I think... I think when I am a guest star on your show, I'll make sure to comb my hair and <laughs> clean my hands and, you know, have be, be fine. When you're a guest show on my channel, I can, um, you can come as you are. You don't have to comb your hair if you don't want to. You're, I'm more casual. Well, right now it's, it's so short. It doesn't matter if I, yeah, we have, we off. have the, we, we both have the COVID do. <laughs> or the COVID don't. Um, so, uh, but this was fun. And uh, let's think of other things we want to discuss the next time we do this. And um, that sounds good. Okay. Well, I will say goodbye well, to your fans. Goodbye, fans. Well, and thank you for for uh, participating. I will. Okay. Uh, Stop the recording now. Okay, and say 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 hi to all the squirrels. Yeah. <laughs>